Recently, my team asked me to make a to-do list to stay on top of things. So I created this amazing looking to-do list in Microsoft Excel. It is really simple to create and anyone can build this kind of a to-do list. In this video, let me help you create a to-do list like this with Excel 365. Let's go. We need two ingredients to make this to-do list. One is a list of to-do activities and another is a list of to-do status items. You can maintain both of these in table format in a spreadsheet. So here I have got to-do status as one table and my data as another table. The next step is to link the status here with the options that we have listed here. So any to-do item can only have one of these kind of statuses. It can be blank, which means it is ongoing. It can be done or ongoing, delegated or deleted. Once you have the ingredients ready, the first step is to make a name for this column. So select this entire column and from the formulary button, click on define name and name this column as status underscore options. Now let's go back to the data, select this entire status column and from the data ribbon, click on the data validation and allow a list of values and here the list would be status underscore options. This way, anytime I go to a blank cell, I'll have this little drop down next to it from which I can pick one of the statuses. Now let's create our visual to-do list. So I'm going to add a new sheet. This is the look that I want to go for. It has three columns of to-do items, each column showing six to-do items and the entire list is arranged in the chronological order. So to create this look, I'm going to select three columns, leaving one column blank and make these columns nice and wide. Next, take these spacer columns and we'll make them narrow. And then we are going to use the insert shape options to draw some shapes on our to-do list. I like this shape, rounded rectangle with just the top corners and then draw a big box here for our heading. When you are drawing these shapes, if you hold down the Alt key, it will automatically snap to the cell grid in Excel. So that is our title. And then we want to show the actual to-do list here and then show a footer here. So for this, I'm going to get one more shape like this. So this is where our to-do list will go. We just need 12 rows and one row will contain the to-do item, the next row will show the date. So the to-do item row will need to be a little bit wider. Next up, we're gonna select this entire range and fill some sort of a color there. And this is our to-do list. Now if I go to the view ribbon and get rid of the grid lines, I'll have a nice clean look on my to-do list. So here I want to show each of our pending activities and their dates for up to 18 activities. If we have more than 18 pending items, we'll just take the top 18 and then show them here. To do all of that, I'm going to add a new worksheet to perform some number crunching. If we go to our data table, we can see that anything that has no status or ongoing status are the to-dos that are ongoing. So let's go here and use the filter function to filter down such activities. So filter and then the name of the table. So our table is the to-do table that has all the data. We don't want the entire table. So I'm going to say, I want to get my activity and due date columns. So you can specify the column names with this kind of a notation. So filter that table where, what we want to say is to-do table status is, it could be ongoing or it needs to be blank. To say or, we can open one bracket here and then say plus to do status is equal to blank. So this is how we can kind of tell filter that we want either this or this. And when you press enter here, it's gonna list a subset of to do activities that are ongoing. So this is not the full list. If I go to my data, I have all these other activities as well, but this 
set shows me what are the things that are ongoing as of now. So these are my pending activities. Well, this is how the data is maintained. In the final to-do list, we want to show activity and date one after another. So we just need to kind of take this and change the orientation. To do this, we can use the to call function. This is one of the newer functions added in Excel 365 and then point to the B3 cell where my filter function is written and then use the spill operator B3 hash. So it gets the entire filter outcome and then it will just change that into one column. While this is all good, we also want to show these activities in chronological order. So to do that, we can go back to our filter result and apply a sort function on top of it. So sort the filter result based on the second column and it needs to be in the ascending order. That's it. Our formula work is now done. We can go to the to do list and go to this cell, say equal to and come back here and select the first 12 cells from here and hit enter. So this is going to give you the first six activities and their corresponding dates. That's why six times two is 12. Let's repeat this for the next 12 and the subsequent 12 as well. Now all our activities are here, but the formatting is not good. So let's just clean up the formatting. First, we need to take these dates and make them look like a date. So select this and then use control shift three to convert this into a date format. Next, let's adjust the formatting for the to-do item. This looks good. So once you fix the formatting for these two, you can select the entire range like that and then double click on the format painter and select this entire range to apply that kind of formatting consistently for the entire data. That's it. Our to-do list is now done. Let's go and play with this. I'm going to see one of these activities. Let's take the plan for Colombian Cocoa vendor visit on 1st of March, 2023. So if I go to my data, locate that item, it's here. Let's mark this as done. And when I come back here, I no longer have that in my to-do list. I have something else. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to learn how to create a tracker using Microsoft Excel, check out the video that is shown on the screen. As always, it is a pleasure talking to you and I'll catch you again somewhere else. Bye.